Okay, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All of us have gathered online to felicitate Dr. Prufrin Beg on the occasion of taking 25 years of glorious service. I, Rasana Salim, and my colleague Emil Vergas are honored to be the moderators for this gathering. We also have Ankit Patel for technical support. All of us are research scholars at IIT Madras. Dr. Beg was working as the project director at Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune, under the Indian Union Ministry of Earth Sciences. He has the distinction of developing and commissioning the first air quality forecasting system for Indian mega cities, which are recognized as the pilot project of the World Meteorological Organization. He is also a recipient of the coveted Shanti Swarup Badnagar Award in 2006 and WMO's NGM Award for his studies related to mesospheric temperature trends. He has been a committee member of the Scientific Steering or Advisory Committee member of the International Global Atmospheric Chemistry Project, Spark of the World Climate Research, and Global Atmospheric Watches Gourmet WMO Project. We will be sharing documentaries and messages made by Dr. Bates' students, mentors, and associates, along with a keynote address by Dr. Gabriel. Now, I would like to welcome Professor Ravindra Getu, the Dean of Industrial Consultancy and Sponsored Research at IIT Madras for his for formal opening remarks. Thank you, Rizana. It is a pleasure to be with all of you. And especially, I'm very happy to see Professor Gufran Beg has joined. And uh, certainly for him, it will be a special day. Uh, for all of us who are in the teaching profession, it is always great that after 25 years, our students organize a felicitation for us and I'm sure that he will be a very happy person today. Uh, the fact that so many people have come together speaks volumes of uh, Professor Beg's work and his impact. Uh, I know very little about it, but I've heard from Sachin many good things, and I'm very happy, sir, that IIT Madras is involved in this felicitation. I'm also very happy that Professor Guy Brashier will give the keynote address uh, we have we've had very good links with uh, Germany, especially. Come together, speaks volumes of uh, especially uh, with Max Planck, and uh, in particularly Professor Gunte's group has benefited very much, and certainly all of us at IIT Madras. So with this, I will let you uh, go on with the felicitation. I am sure that will be a great success. And congratulations again, Professor Baik. Thank you, Professor Geto. Now I invite Dr. Sachin S. Gunte to share his experiences on behalf of Dr. Baik's students and associates. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rizana. I will just kind of... Uh, uh, start uh, sharing my screen and uh, we'll go ahead with this. Um, I hope that uh, I am audible as well as my screen is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Is that visible? Yes. Thank yes. You. Okay. Uh, so, what I have tried to do here is uh, that rather than kind of putting some sort of a visual uh, Treat, which we will anyway have. I just thought that I'll probably go down this uh, memory lane about a little bit of a nostalgia and then try to, uh, the real tribute from my side uh, or from all of us would be like, what is that he taught us basically? What is that we kind of try to take uh, that forward from here? So I have just tried to uh, kind of uh, you know, break it down in, uh, in various things which I learned from him. Uh, uh, just the three and a half uh, years of time. So at sometimes I do believe that if you have a good advisor, whether three and a half years for a PhD time is a good uh, thing or a bad thing, I don't know. So his role as a friend, philosopher and guide, like, you know, how he successfully played all these things. I'll probably just try to uh, supplement that with some anecdote rather than going into the pictures and videos and all that stuff. Uh, I think it is a good uh, time and opportunity also that to put it up that how did I land up there? I mean, how did I land up in front of uh, Dr. Beg in his office one fine morning? 
uh, what do you what has it taught us beyond science like you know how do i take that uh, legacy forward beyond science uh, a very small dedication for uh, my side and how that dedication or what is that special privilege or a feeling i would try to put that in terms of uh, in, in terms of a research recent paper which has come out and then also the small glimpses from others like uh, dr sarod chau vikas singh and bishma tagi all they have uh, sent basically uh, from us one thing which i learned from him during the entire uh, duration of my tenure there that he always guided passionately and through its high spirit uh, what it means is that uh, through the high spirit like i still remember that when i prepared my first graph of uh, uh, surface ozone in pune uh, of, uh, representing the monthly diurnal variation i probably had like maybe 20 mistakes in that right and then every time i went to uh, kind of discuss with him his passion was the same irrespective of the number of mistakes which were there in uh, in that graph now i don't know whether it was his true passion towards the ozone which probably is still intact or it was probably the passion towards the student that whatever the mistake is done then how you basically treat it right you know and then how to keep that spirit high all the time that's something which is uh, really very important and i treat i still try to i mean not only cherish that but implement it in my life that how do i really do the uh, research very passionately uh, the students interest was always at the forefront now what do i basically mean by that is um, at times i believe that uh, at at one occasion if not on more that he has cancelled his personal vacation for that the reason was i believe i were probably to go for some sort of a conference it was my first conference i have never attended that it was i think in vizag right you know and he said that like look it, it's not that really important i can always postpone my vacation but get these things right and i was really surprised that why for such a small thing that a, a guy would really kind of cancel his uh, 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 kind of a vacation pre planned vacation i don't know what was uh, he going through on a family front considering that now i have a family so but that was something which i always learned through many examples that how the student interest was always at the forefront all the resources were made available like you know you ask for something and then you uh, get it right you know anything which is related with the science i mean i do still believe that probably in, in year 2003 and 2002 during that era at iitm pune Uh, we probably had access to one of the best facilities including the computational facilities and a pen drive like you know 512 mb pen drive at that time was really a special privilege to own and then it was still at our disposal and uh, above all that basically summarizes that the science always had a, a priority to quickly put into how did i land up there the very simple answer is frustration now the work which i was doing uh, before i really joined him somehow did not interest me i mean any work is uh, not less not more neither more interesting or less interesting but personally for me it was not really uh, uh, taking me anywhere so i just kind of uh, so i had just recently heard a talk in pune university at that time that about the carbon dioxide and global warming and i really this is a very interesting field so why don't i do something with it and i just googled at that time that which is the institute in pune which works on global warming and climate change and then i found out this indian institute of tropical meteorology which works in that area i landed up that institute and then there was this receptionist her name was shirley i still remember that name and then the first question which i asked her that madam can you please tell me who is the very famous scientist here she says that wo bek sab baithte hain udhar unke paas jao what do you want to do and then i walks into its cabin and says that sir mujhe aapke sath phd karna hai right you know he says that by who are you what is that your background what do you want to do but one thing i can assure you that probably uh, some other reason or what bonding or what it could be he said that thoda der wait karo right you know and then he asked me to wait and then he called me and he said that like look i don't have a phd position at this moment but i have a technical assistant right and then if you prove your metal i can assure you that you will walk away with the phd degree and my, i mean and then that exactly where his words after three and a half years when i was leaving for the max planck institute said that like look i keep my word that you will walk away with a phd degree and you are going to the best place so sometimes the frustrations in life are always good like you know they probably land up you with the people like dr gufran bey i don't know maybe for everybody but for me it was really the uh, true this thing what is that he taught us beyond the science like to be a good human being he always used to uh, teach us that like never compromise on your principles and uh, he said that sometimes it may bring 
some sort of a nasty thing for you, but in the long run, it is definitely beneficial. So his philosophy was always like that. If you are a good human being, you would automatically turn out to be a good researcher, right? And I still try to follow that. Like, you know, it's always good to be a good human being uh, before than uh, a good scientist, right? You know, that, that, that basically goes hand in hand. Well, having said this, I will quickly run through a small dedication about uh, my recent uh, Nature Geoscience paper, which I completely attribute to his uh, encouragement, mostly because the field campaign and other things which I learned from him. <clears throat> so I'll not go into the detailed science of it, but then to uh, for the orientation purpose, the audience which is here, to quickly give you this glimpse that what happens in Delhi all the time, you see that this very <clears throat> low visibility is always the problem. It has been uh, causing the severe losses to the economy and jeopardizing the life. So the simple philosophy of this uh, <clears throat> visibility is that you have high PM 2.5 concentration with the very high relative humidity and it kind of causes the uh, haze in that. Now, how does it basically goes into, like if you look into the chemical composition of this PM 2.5, which is called as a particulate matter 2.5, like aerodynamic diameter of particles less than 2.5 micron, you look at the <clears throat> 30 locations across the globe, you don't see any chloride in this. You see organic sulfate, nitrate, ammonia, blah, blah, blah. But Delhi is extremely spatial that you get a 10% of chloride. Now, basically, a certain amount of PM 2.5, every PM 2.5 is essentially caused by the chloride. Now, what this chloride basically does is that as the chloride increases, it takes up more water. And it, as it takes up more water, the particles, they grow big enough. And then the HCl further co-condenses on that. This hand-in-hand -hand process basically makes the particles grow very large enough, even at the relatively low humidity, that it can very badly affect the <clears throat> visibility. Now, where does this chloride come from? We looked into Chennai. We did a special, we waited for one year because we only had one instrument. So we had to wait for one year during the Bogi festival burning. Where does this chloride come from? Well, I mean, you burn the plastic, it releases the HCl. <clears throat> you have the livestock and fertility fertilizer use, which basically uh, emits the ammonia. So the HCl combines with ammonia to give you the ammonium chloride. Now, the point is that you cannot really reduce the ammonia because you cannot tell people that stop your livestock and uh, agricultural activity. So the only control is uh, the HCl so that you can reduce the uh, hydro uh, ammonium chloride concentration and uh, reduce that. Now, why this is a special privilege, like the small glimpse which I gave you about the daily visibility, that when this paper came out in Nature Geoscience, it was <clears throat> a very special privilege that my uh, PhD advisor himself wrote the news and views about that particular paper in that very edition of the Nature Geosciences. So I'm just kind of sharing this glimpse here about the, <clears throat> about the news and views which he wrote in Nature Geosciences for our paper, which he titled very aptly as the clearing smocks particular problem. So if you believe that understanding the paper is really too difficult for you, I would really recommend and then go and read this <clears throat> uh, read this nice piece of an article which he has put it into the nature geoscience and one of the very uh, line which makes me proud is that when he says that writing in nature geoscience gunte et al revealed that blah 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 so i think that's probably uh, would be the right uh, guru dakshina to him that we have brought it up to this level but then at the same time be assured that we will keep this flag uh, going as much as within our best capacity and honesty uh, what we could do. Uh, some of the students, they have sent a very nice pictures. Uh, the association, this is from the Bhishma Tagi. Uh, this is probably the uh, time when he got the SSB award in 2006. And then just a month before I have actually left to Germany. So I could not be the part of that, which I probably still regret that I was not part of that celebration. But more than that regret, the news was really big that he got this SSB award. This is from uh, Saraj Kumar Sahu, uh, who is one of the very long associates with him since 2006 right from there so he kind of gave this very nice roadway like it was an incredible and memorable journey for him uh, to be associated with uh, professor Baig. i think professor saroj kumar sao is there right now it goes like from various conferences and everything which we have arranged together and then been a part of that uh, this is also from the vikas singh who was a uh, very long term associates uh, uh, with Dr. Baig uh, since 2005 and then still working together on various projects. And this is just kind of he completed, he kind of created a collage that uh, in some of the pictures, I am also present there. 
and looks like that the time has really quickly uh, flown back. So just to, uh, because of the restriction of the time, I would like to kind of keep this very small. I have already taken more than four minutes than allotted to me. And then thank you very much. Over to you, Rizana. Uh, Rizana? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Thank you so much for that lovely tribute, sir. Now, let's the messages from Dr. Bates Menders on this occasion. Uh, there is no volume. No, we can't hear that. Can Pallavi or somebody look into it quickly? Ankit? Yes, I am doing that. Yeah. Ask Pallavi to look into that. It is not, uh, volume is not there. And 10, I still remember when the Commonwealth Games uh, were to be organized in Delhi. Uh Dr. Beg uh, had made tremendous contribution. Actually, it was a pioneering work which he started in 2010. I still remember when the Commonwealth Games uh, were to be organized in Delhi. Uh, he proposed that we should provide uh, stadium-wise uh, air quality and which would be very useful and uh, this was uh, something which was quite uh, interesting and uh, it went very well. All the stadium had uh, the forecast and it was validated also pretty well and that led to beginning of uh, air quality monitoring in Delhi later on and then many other states and today uh, it, it's very important that uh, the, all the cities are being polluted and uh, the pioneer work uh, which uh, Dr. Baig did will be remembered all the time to come. I wish him all the best in his uh, future endeavor and I'm sure that he would be remain very active and healthy. Thank you. I would like to uh, say hello and congratulations to uh, Gufun Beg. Gufun Beg is a good friend of mine and also a very valuable colleague. We know each other for many years. And in fact, a uh, long time ago, when uh, after he had been working with Professor Mitra, 
and got really a, become an expert in uh, uh, upper atmosphere, we started to work on ion chemistry and on the ion composition uh, of the mesosphere. Then we moved down to the stratosphere. And then we did something which was really challenging. We tried to look at a model, really developing a model of ion composition in the troposphere. And of course, uh, that was very risky because there were very few observations and uh, all these papers were published. Institute that looks at meteorology and, and climate change. But I think uh, Gufran was able to hold the, the science at a very, very high level. He published a lot of papers, peer reviewed, he published technical uh, documents, he published also, or he edited at least, a number of books. Uh, one of them is on anthropogenic, or at least on uh, long term changes uh, of, of the atmosphere, the development of a system for prediction of chemical weather and also uh, having other groups now in, in the institution that came out of uh, basically his leadership and his mentoring uh, is really something that is great. So I wish all the best to Gufran. It's a pleasure to felicitate Dr. Baig on his super animation. I have known Dr. Baig for over 20 years. Dr. Baig is a hardworking scientist who has spent a significant part of his career in the study of near-surface particulate aerosols and trace gases. The SUFFER network is largely due to his efforts. Today it is extensively used in different parts of the country. MAPAN network, also set, him, set up by him, is giving valuable information regarding near-surface conditions in different parts of the country. Though Dr. Big is superannuating today, I am sure he will remain in active research for many years to come. Hope he has a more relaxed second innings and spend quality time with his family. I wish him the very best in all his future endeavors. Thank you. It is my great, uh, great honor to have this chance to uh, participate and say something at uh, uh, Gufran's uh, uh, retirement. So on behalf of myself and, and on behalf of the World Meteorological Organization, Global Atmospheric Watch. We want to uh, congratulate Gufran on his uh, stellar career, his great contributions to uh, atmospheric science uh, in general. And in my mind, uh, his star in the sky is really associated with his establishment of the SAFAR uh, air quality uh, forecasting system. He was the first to establish an air quality forecasting system uh, in India. He did that. Uh, in association with the uh, uh, Commonwealth Games. And as he knows, establishing of a, a system is not just a model, but it's the observing system, it's the emission system, and it's the whole value chain. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a stroll down the memory lane. Presenting before you a beautiful documentary featuring the resourceful contributions of Dr. Bake towards atmospheric chemistry in the last 25 years. Over to you, Ankit. Professor Dr. Gufran Beg is superannuating after long, successful and enriching scientific career at Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune. In this 25 golden years of dedication, determination and development of atmospheric chemistry in India, which motivated the next generations of scientists across India. Dr. Gufran Beg joined Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune in the year of 1996. 
With his joining at IITM Pune, a new research venture was established. That was studies related to impact of increasing ozone precursors on the surface ozone over India. With him came the new ideas of news and resources, which changed the course of research in IITM. For the first time, IITM Pune saw an advanced server for climate modeling in combination with an advanced state-of-art ozone pollution monitoring laboratory with a set of instruments used for ozone precursor. With this combination of chemistry modeling and observations started an era of comprehensive science which will lead to many important findings later on through his efforts. The year 1999 to 2000 was very special for atmospheric and climate science in India with the Indo-X campaign. Dr. Peek was actively participating in the campaign, particularly leading the modeling part of it. It was around 2001 chemistry climate modeling was initiated at IITM and if we may say in India. Starting from 2003, the pollution monitoring laboratory came in existence, paving a way in India which was followed by many about having a comprehensive laboratory setup the zeal for science was further enhanced by systematic and well developed field measurement campaigns in sugar factories around pune for improved understanding of local sources of pollution contributing to surface ozone this would pave the road for others particularly his students to follow the path in years to come while at one end the research related to ozone was shaping up he continued to work on one of his other keen interest which was related to upper atmosphere a paper investigating the mesospheric temperature trend made a path breaking research related to upper atmospheric temperature trend and for the first time linked it to anthropogenic activities needless to say this paper garnered the global attention and was praised on various scientific platforms and that the prestigious world meteorological organization Norbert Gerbier's Mum International Award in 2005 Another important milestone to occur in his life and for IITM were two important meetings hosted by IITM together in March 2006 The WCRP and IGBP meeting saw the who's who of climate world visiting IITM Pune. This meeting for the first time gave a platform to research students from IITM Pune and India to interact with top-notch scientists from all across the globe. Dr. G. B. Pant, then director of IITM Pune, gave the entire responsibility to his trusted aide, Dr. Baig, to make this meeting as a grand success. Eminent scientists and professors all across the globe were present at this meeting including a leading figure from India Professor AP Mitra Year 2006 was the turning point in Dr Baig's career when his contribution to science was recognized at highest possible level in India He received the prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar award for his contribution to atmospheric science in India He was the first recipient of this award from IITM. It was the turning point in the history of India that an atmospheric chemist was recognized for his immense contribution. His work by now had started getting recognition on national scale and paved the road for the fact that more and more students getting inspired to take atmospheric science as a career. In the year 2007 he mentioned we do not have many dedicated and structured degree programs for atmospheric science in India and there's going to be a huge requirement for climate scientists in years to come he was awarded maharana uday singh national award in 2007 for his immense contribution and mentorship in atmospheric sciences in 2008 He was awarded Certificate of Merit award by Ministry of Earth Science for his immense contribution in atmospheric chemistry and in 2009 he was elected as a fellow of prestigious Indian Academy of Sciences. When Commonwealth Games were proposed to be hosted in Delhi in the year of 2010, air quality of Delhi was major concern. It was during this time that air pollution was seen as an important problem. There was a need to forecast pollution for better understanding of problem we are facing today as well as tomorrow. A pollution forecasting system was developed and deployed during Commonwealth Games in Delhi 2010. With this another milestone was achieved for atmospheric chemistry and air pollution in India. 
a dedicated and advanced portal combining the data from network of pollution monitoring stations with chemistry climate model was used for forecasting the pollution over Delhi. It was named as System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research, SUFFER as it is fondly known. In coming years, SUFFER expanded over to Pune in 2013, Mumbai in 2015 and to Ahmedabad in 2017, covering all the major metropolitan cities of India. 2011, his program SUFFER was additionally recognized by WMO and he was facilitated by certificates of innovation by World Meteorological Organization. He also conferred Golden Jubilee Award by IITM in recognition of his services towards institute. Along with devoting his time towards fundamental research, Dr. Baig has always wished and aimed to dedicate his time to bring science to the benefit of common man. He always believed and followed. Research should not only be limited to publishing papers but also brought in terms of policy so that common man can get benefit of it. While Suffer is a prime example of that, he further worked with various governments, local bodies, NGOs and other bodies of scientific repute to disseminate valuable scientific information, understandable and beneficial to common man. He closely worked with governments of Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh on national levels and with government of Nepal on various aspects of air pollution in particular. The most successful one is developing high resolution emission inventories for various cities of aforementioned states. These emission inventories is one of the most scientifically outstanding contribution helping to drastically improve the performance of regional chemistry models. Very few people are aware that throughout his life, he has been very passionate about teaching. Recognizing his research contribution, his excellent research abilities and outstanding teaching skills, Amity University conferred honorary professorship on Dr. Bay. The idea of field measurement campaign is at the core and very essential for studying the air pollution and atmospheric chemistry. And this idea needed a deep rooting in the scientific community to appreciate the importance of observational data for model validations. P has made a tremendous progress in terms of enhancing, understanding and implementing the much needed policies which were backed by strong science in abating air pollution in India. Such a stupendous progress in atmospheric science in India is combined and dedicated efforts of various organizations and well-known researchers and teachers. Atmospheric science and air pollution related studies today would not have been possible without the hard work, determination and vision of various well-known names in India. Dr. Baig stands out as one of the most prominent names to take atmospheric research to next level in India. He has published more than 250 top quality peer review research papers with more than 5,500 citations. Books related to ozone and climate change deliver various invited talks at national as well as international level. He also chaired various national and international committees which were at forefront tackling the climate change issues across the globe. It would be unfair towards Dr. Bay if his contribution is quantified only in terms of facilities he established, research papers he published, collaborations he created and services to community he offered. Another important dimension of success is the capacity building he has done through his career by guiding doctoral students. All his students are currently well placed in reputed institution of India as well as abroad, doing excellent research and carrying the torch Dr. Baig has handed over to them. This ensures that legacy continues. Uh, now over to Emil for introducing the keynote speaker, Dr. Gabe Brissior. Thank you, Rasana. Today, we have a distinguished note from A.P. Brasio, who is a senior scientist and former director of the 
Flag Institute for Meteorology in Hans, Germany. He's also a distinguished scholar and a former associate director at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. Brazil was chair of the scientific committee of the International Geosphere Biosphere Program and of the World Climate Research Program. He was also president of the Atmospheric Science Section of the American Geophysical Union and member of the Council of AGU. He was a coordinating lead author for the fourth assessment report of the International Panel for Climate Change, IPCC, and jointly with Al Gore, the IPCC was awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. His interests include atmospheric chemistry, climate change, stratospheric ozone depletion, global air pollution, and solar terrestrial relations. He has led the development of complex models describing the formation and fate of chemical compounds in the stratosphere and troposphere. It's my privilege to welcome Professor Gay Brasior to flag off this webinar and deliver the keynote address on the topic of atmospheric chemistry. Good day to all of you. And what I would like to do today is first of all, of course, to, to share my screen so that you can see my uh, presentation on uh, chemical weather. In fact, uh, chemical weather uh, is uh, the, the topic, of course, of of this talk uh, because uh, Guffron Beek has been very active in the development of uh, chemical weather prediction uh, system. And so this concept of chemical weather uh, next to meteorological weather is really uh, coming along. Meteorological weather refers to the state of the atmosphere and of course day-to-day -day variability uh, we might talk about climate or average weather over typically a period of 30 years, although depending on the problem or the application we want to, to consider. But both cases, meteorological weather or climate, examine physical quantities, and they can be temperature, pressure, winds, uh, cloudiness, etc., uh, precipitation, of course, uh, climate is more looking at the long-term evolution of the couple uh, atmosphere, ocean, land uh, system. Now, progress in fundamental of understanding of, of chemical uh, processes uh, in the atmosphere over the last decades has really enabled our community to uh, develop basically advanced environmental predictive uh, capability be beyond the physical aspect of the uh, Earth system. And so among those uh, advances is, of course, the capability of developing accurate chemical weather forecast, uh, like it's done also uh, in Pune, but also developing uh, source attribution information uh, so that you can really uh, pinpoint where the major sources of air pollution are coming and perhaps take short-term action to, to reduce those uh, emissions and uh, improve uh, air quality and uh, for, for the population. And so what I'd like to do in this short presentation is really to, to, to stress the importance of integrating to the atmospheric chemistry in uh, environmental uh, and environmental prediction and projection system, both at the level of short-term viability, chemical weather, but also in fact, uh, in what regards uh, the climate system and, and longer term uh, projection. So what is chemical weather? Well, chemical weather really describes the short-term variation in atmospheric chemical composition. And Composition means trace gases, can aerosols. And when we talk about short term, we talk about minutes to days. So it's, it's relatively just like the meteorological weather. And of course, this notion came up because of the recognition of the, the large short term viability in the chemical. 
Topical variability. At uh, both regional and, and change pretty rapidly areas. And so rapidly changing it also not only from, from life in cities, but also from erratic wildfire. Uh, biospheric processes that are very dependent on humidity and temperature, and also economic activities. Uh, and, and they all lead to variability in the uh, atmospheric uh, composition. So what you see here is kind of a, a, a schematic description of how a prediction of chemical weather uh, should be done. And we distinguish here between, let's say, global and regional air quality forecast, and on the other hand, sub-regional or local downscaling. And so uh, both are very important and both are very difficult. But you can see the ingredients, the input to those uh, forecasts, uh, especially on the global and regional scale. You see, of course, space observations. And so here, data assimilation is very important. Uh, we use space observation to initialize the models. Surface emissions, both natural and anthropogenic, which is a driving force. We see meteorological forecasts that tells us what the dynamics of the atmosphere will be, and that includes wind temperature, precipitation, has precipitation has a big impact on, on air quality, uh, the passage of fronts, the, 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 the boundary layer height, etc. And then we have also in situ measurements of chemical species, and they might be used either to initialize, but more often really to look at evaluating the prediction. How well are we doing? And so you can see that you know once we have done those forecasts, we have to, of course, look at uncertainties, evaluate the prediction, and the evaluation should really lead of the improvement uh, of the models and, of course, uh, coming up to new products that can be imported. Now, on the sub-regional and local scales, uh, we, we should also uh, probably be using other tools than the traditional uh, chemical transport models. Here we might be using large eddy simulation or urban type uh, models that are uh, taking into account the, the urban scale and go to the street level or perhaps to the block level in an urban area. And again, we provide products and they can be more than just a concentration of species include uh, indices, health impact, and alerts for maybe uh, air pollution uh, uh, events or episodes. And of course, uh, the, the product uh, dissemination is very important. So for the people who are interested in just meteorological aspect, you should really recognize the similarity here between what we do in meteorology and what we do in air quality. Very, very similar. Uh, approaches. And of course, it's more than similarity or parallel approaches. We need to mix the two. And you can see here, for example, as we talk about chemical transport models and all the different uh, aspects that I mentioned earlier, the emissions, uh, the, uh, the chemistry, the, the transport, the cloud processes, in each of them, we introducing input that are uh, very, very important and need to be estimated, evaluated, and it shows you the complexity of uh, developing a chemical transport model in particular. What this table is showing, and I hope you will uh, like to see that, is really the comparison between the foci of meteorological weather and chemical weather. Into details, but if you look at the variable or maybe the emphasis, temperature, pressure, uh, winds, evaporation, precipitation, atmospheric humidity, PBL height, aerosol and cloud microphysics. You can see in each case what it means for both the meteorological uh, groups or models or activities and the chemical weather activities. Let me uh, give you an, an example. Uh, if we look, for example, at, uh, I don't know, uh, PBL heights, well, uh, the meteorologists are interested because of the exchange of sensible heat, 
formation of clouds and thunderstorms. But the, 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 the chemists are interested in the vertical exchanges of uh, near surface chemical species, the ones that are emitted at the surface. They're interested in the small scale dispersion of chemical species, in the NOx production by, by thunderstorms, uh, exchanges between the boundary layer and, and the free uh, troposphere. Uh, let me show you other example here, and I, I urge you to look at that in more, in more detail. But uh, you can see, you know, when we talk about, for example, extreme events, and you see here, I mentioned extreme event in addition to solar radiation, terrestrial radiation, land cover, surface humidity, surface emission of greenhouse gases and reactive species. When you look at extreme events, well, the meteorologists are really interested in high winds, heavy precipitation, convective activity, thunderstorms, hurricane, typhoons, monsoon in India in particular, while the, the, the chemists are interested in uh, high pollution events that happen in the stable boundary layer, uh, resulting from, from high emission, but they want low wind velocity, lack of precipitation, reduced visibility perhaps, all that is kind of parallel, but sometimes also go in the opposite direction. And so a dialogue between meteorologists and chemists is very, very important. Let me uh, add a similarity between what we do in weather forecast and in air pollution or in chemical weather forecast. It's the use of multi-mole ensemble. We know that the weather is not, uh, I mean, has a chaotic nature. Of course, the chaotic nature of the, the winds and the dynamics reflects in the calculation of the chemical species. And so in the air chemistry uh, world now, we, uh, we don't just, just use one single model. Uh, by a number of models, CM2.0. Five, that's from the left, different uh, models with, with the data. And in, in reality, what you see is that the RMSE is lowest for the ensemble median, is lower for the ensemble medium than it is for any individual model. And you see that the correlation is higher. And so what you can say is that to a large extent, the ensemble median, maybe the ensemble mean also, is a better prediction than the prediction of each individual model. And you see about the same thing for ozone. But you can see there that it's not an absolute low. It's not even proven. It's just a, a, it's what you see when you, when it's an observation. When you do it, you see that very often the ensemble is better than each individual model. That was known for meteorology. It's also known for chemistry. But again, it's not absolute. You see here for ozone, for example, the RMSE uh, for the median, which is this greenish turquoise curve, um, is low, but it can be lower sometimes by individual models, the real good models. Well, here the correlation, because in the case of ozone, is better for the ensemble mean. Again, the ensemble mean is the tur turquoise. Uh, so let me just uh, conclude here this very short presentation in honor of Giffen Babe. And I'd like to conclude with a word on, on the future. So first of all, we should know that new development, basically, in supercomputing, both hardware and software, should allow us really in a few years to provide operational, operational global chemical weather forecast at a spatial resolution of 10 kilometers, which I think is very good. But if we really go to regional forecast, we will re probably reach resolution of less than one kilometers. And in fact, and I didn't talk much about it, but 
the mall of the future might be a global mall with zooming capability that gives you a global coverage and then a lot of information in the region of interest. For example, for you in India, you could have a global mall with zooming capability. And my work at NCAR has led me to, to work very much with the team there on a new mall called Musica, which is going to do that with an unstructured grid that will be zooming and, and downscaling basically in the region of interest. And there we can go to resolution than one, less than and better than one, one kilometer. Uh, I should say better, not less, but better than one kilometer. The other aspect in the future is the appearance of artificial intelligence algorithm. Uh, they will have to be trained by ensemble of model simulation, probably the best to do. And then they could be used to be uh, adopted and, and uh, implemented in large and complex Earth system models. The people who do Earth system model keep telling us that chemistry is too expensive. Well, we can train an intelligence, an artificial intelligence algorithm, and then introduce those into those complex Earth system models. Finally, inverse modeling techniques uh, need to be developed and further adapted and implemented, employed to identify locally and regionally the major sources of pollutant and also the greenhouse gases. Uh, that play a big role. And that's important to develop mitigation measures. You need to know when you see pollution in the city, where is it coming from? Is it local? Is it coming from outside the city? Uh, and if it's uh, local, what is the source? Is it uh, traffic? Is it industry? Is it residential? Uh, if it's coming from outside, where is it coming from? What kind of economic sector is involved so that you can improve air quality and ultimately protect climate. And I'm going to show you this uh, graph here uh, that illustrate this. Uh, you see basically uh, that, you know, improving prediction capability by incorporating, integrating air composition, chemical composition with weather and climate is probably the way to go today in, in model development. And in fact, you know, I show you here weather models, couple computer modeling, that also then treat essentially uh, airborne transport, water cycle, atmospheric chemistry, land change, processes, ecosystem, processes. So a couple environmental model, and that will go and help us understanding impacts, extreme weather, climate induced health impact, toxic nuclear disease, Transport, I mean, this is transport. We know what we're talking about these days. Flooding, drought alerts, water availability, air pollution, habitat changes, biodiversity loss. And that is going to be uh, important for us to moderate the influence and take adaptation measure. But it's also going to be important for us to do research and discover new processes. So I hope uh, that a uh, very, very short presentation gave you a little bit of a view of where we're heading in terms of uh, basically uh, all the uh, chemical weather issue, air quality issue. And I know that in India, uh, several groups are working on these issues. Uh, and I know you're doing an extremely good work uh, and I'm, I'm wishing you all the best. Again, I hope to come and visit you and encourage you to go on in both issue related to climate, which uh, is very important, weather, meteorology, monsoon studies, but also air quality, all are related. Good luck to all of you. Thank you so much. 25 years of service in the field of academics is a huge chunk of one's lifetime. It's definitely a blessing and an inspiring achievement to look up to. But there is something more priceless than the laurels Dr. Beige has been presented within the last two decades. Well, it's this amazing bond that his students and colleagues share with him. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to the experiences these students and colleagues have to share. Five students who worked under me, Babe was the best. He was serious in his studies as well as very social also. I have only shown him the path and he has, <clears throat> by his talent and effort, he has achieved this. His achievement is <clears throat> his achievement for me also. I would like to congratulate Gufran on his marvelous career, specifically Gufran's contribution to the advancement of atmospheric chemistry and air quality issues both in India and internationally is impressive and important. Within WMO Gourmet, we have had an excellent collaboration through many years. Gufran has the rare capability to see and to provide the chain from research to practical solutions that can be taken up by users. This is indeed something very rare among scientists. This has been especially evident through the SAFAR project, where air quality services have been put up in urban areas. Hello, I am Ana Elias from Argentina. I first met Gufran in a Yaga meeting in 1997 in Uppsala, Sweden, when after my talk, he invited me to join a working group starting the study of long-term changes and trends in the upper and middle atmosphere. Since then, the group has grown incessantly the subject gained increasing importance along with Gufran's role as a leading researcher and trainer of young scientists. Namaskar. It is my great pleasure to speak about my friend, Dr. Gufran Beg. Hello, Gufran. Welcome to my living room. I've been asked to say a few words uh, to show our appreciation for the tremendous support that you have shown us for the past several years. When I met you about five, six years ago, if not longer, when we were thinking about putting together the proposal for the PROMOTE project, which was funded. I could observe him closely, how he works in a scientific way, how he's expert in technical aspects, how he can lead the program by getting the successful cooperation from his colleague. He is deeply honest and hence he could face any awkward situation in the given environment of selective justice with brave heart, with great patience and quite intelligence in his brain. Namaskar. First of all, let me state that it is impossible for me to imagine Dr. Gufran Beg as a retired man. Simply impossible. He would certainly reappear in his new avatar to serve the society again. He is known to cross the boundaries of any area that he is working. Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award is given to his outstanding contribution to the science and technology. He got it, but here too he crossed his boundaries. He ensured that his contribution not only benefits science, but also society. That's how Safar reappeared. Then he connected his contribution to the health sector. That's how Sahas came. I've been very fortunate to uh, have spent very quality time in our initial days of uh, professional careers, both at PRL Ahmedabad. Only to speak about Dr. Big, we have a long association since 1980 when I was a research scholar and he was in the final year of MSc Physics in Udaipur University. Later I joined IMD and he joined IIT. Again we were associated with IndoX program and his contribution was enormous for which he was awarded prestigious WMO and Shanti Suru Bhatnagar Awards. Dr. Beg introduced air quality monitoring and forecast in India. First of all, I would like to wish a very happy and healthy retirement life to Dr. Beg, sir. Uh, 
I think that a big name is synonymous with engine inventory. As you know, engine inventory is a, a very crucial thing for any uh, air pollution modeler. Without which, it's uh, your endeavors are association. Big has taken a lot of effort to bring in the suffer monitoring stations in Pune city and this has been a quite a historic moment that past so many years and accurate data of air pollution uh, parameters has been displayed and is monitored in Pune city. Sir, I know that when I was in the National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi, I joined the Indo-X Data Center Professor A.P. Mitra Sir ke बेक साहब प्रोफेसर एपी मित्रा सर के बहुत पसंदा रहे बेक साहब हमारे लाइब्रेरी एंड एडिटोरियल कमेटी के चेयरमैन 2014 से 2019 तक रहे और उस कार्यकाल के दौरान लाइब्रेरी पोर्टल का निर्माण आईआईटी में स्कीपिंग सर्विसेज और उसकी आर्काइवल सिस्टम की शुरुआत डी स्पेस का उपयोग इंस्टीट्यूशनल रिपोजिटरी के विकास के लिए इत्यादि इसके अलावा सबसे महत्वपूर्ण कार्य था कि आईआईटी रिसर्च को किस तरह लोगों तक पहुंचा सके इसमें सर का योगदान अत्यधिक महत्वपूर्ण रहा उनके मार्गदर्शन में आईआईटी आई टी रिसर्च हाईलाइट वेब पेज का निर्माण दो हज़ार पंद्रह में हुआ उन्होंने इंडिया इंटरनेशनल साइंस फेस्टिवल आईआईटीएफ इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस विज्ञान प्रसार की नेशनल साइंस फिल्म फेस्टिवल विज्ञान भारती के कार्यक्रम मेरा जो वर्क था और जो मेरा वर्क इंटरेस्टेड था उनके साथ करने में बहुत मुझे खुशी हो गई नमस्कार डॉक्टर गुफरान बेग सर आई नो यू पर्सनली अ मैन विथ लॉट्स ऑफ साइंटिफिक टेम्परामेंट बट फॉर मी यू आर अ की एंटिटी फॉर बोथ माय पर्सनल एंड प्रोफेशनल वर्ल्ड हेलो एवरीवन इट इज माय इमेंस प्लेजर एंड एन ऑनर वर्ड्स about my phd thesis supervisor dr gufran beg and especially on this momentous day of his life it has been a good 16 17 years since i achieved my doctoral degree however the memories of those days are still so fresh in my mind even to this date My association with Dr. Baik uh, dates back to uh, 2002. So basically, I have uh, known him for uh, last 18 years. Uh, I was uh, Dr. Baik's second PhD student, and then during my PhD tenure, what I learned from him is the dedication, determination, and how to be demanding with your own self when you are basically doing uh, uh, a research. Uh, and then particularly, what I learned from him in research is that. there is no compromise or there is no shortcut as far as the quality of the science is concerned it is very hard to believe that my one of the greatest inspiration my sir professor beg is retiring how time has passed so rapidly it has been 17 years since my association with him with the start of my phd proudly i can say that it was a great and memorable journey and your passion for science and hard work has taken you to every height of your success and you are a true inspiration and great leader it was july 2004 when i had joined iitm without knowing the fact that one day i will get an opportunity to work with dr beg and become an air quality scientist he was in germany then to complete the mozart simulations with the newly developed emission inventory i met him for the first time when he returned from there we know that dr beg has been very hard working working up to the late hours very creative very communicating and courageous scientist namaste i'm dr neha parkhi i worked with beg sir for a long 9 years and i must say those are the excellent years of my career I worked with sir on different projects including NBS and Suffer. Under Suffer I was involved in establishment of dense network of air quality and weather monitoring station. 
I have learned so many things from you, including scientific thinking, reasoning, data interpretation, data analysis, and uh, main thing is finishing tasks before time. Hi everyone, I have learned dedication and hardworking nature from Big Sir. Hi everyone, this is Ramakrishna Karmari, one of the PhD students under the supervision of Dr. Gupta and Big Sir. And I am very happy to be, and very happy and grateful to be one of his PhD students. Myself, Madhvi Rana, I, ha I had completed my doctorate degree under the joint supervision of Dr. Gofran Beg and Dr. Mittal sir. I would like to express my sincere and warm gratitude to Dr. Gofran Beg for his continuous support and scientific advice throughout my research career. Hello everyone, I am Ravi. It's my pleasure to talk about the environment and atmosphere scientists of the Beg and their superannuation. So how my association has been started with him and how he has influenced me in my research career and overall development. So my first encounter was normal, it happened in 2009 at IITM, but actual interaction and discussion has been in Dr. Beg has always encouraged to take up very basic problems and go to the depth of it and understand the science behind this. His way of communicating the science to the common man will always be an inspiration. Hi, I am Nikhil Kolari. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Sir. I have learned a lot of things from the Sir in last five years. He always encouraged us and uh, help us to do new things. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Shahana Banu, working as a research fellow under Dr. Gufran Beg. Uh, and having worked with him from past 3.5 years, the most important thing I have learned that um, any scientific progress or innovation is incomplete until it is reached or understood at community level. Hi, my name is Ritesh Kalbande. During the last three and a half years working here as a research fellow at IITM with Dr. Gufran Beg. I'm so proud to be laid forward by a person who is not only scientifically renowned, but is also an amazing project director. It is a privilege to work under leadership of Dr. Beg, who believes in simple living and high thinking. You are always ready to help everyone at any time. Hello everyone, my name is Pavin Mar. I am working with Dr. Beg sir since last three and a half years. Whenever I approach him, he resolve my query. Hello everyone, I am Samir Dhapre, Program Officer IIT Envis. Envis is a program run by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change since last four decades. And Beg sir is associated with Envis since 2003. Dr. Beg, we all are truly inspired at this moment as your students, colleagues and mentors share their beautiful experiences. I'm sure that this moment would step up a notch higher as you address the gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite Dr. Beg to speak a few words. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my all teachers, my all uh, very close to my heart, all the students. That's about uh, 18 students who have completed PhDs, and there are five, six in the pipeline. So I am so privileged to have a uh, guided about 22 students. I have purposefully taken this cape because the whole program I was not wearing this cape, but now I kept it because this is the identity suffer which uh, made uh, our group, uh, our research uh, and taken it to the international level. Now, first uh, and foremost, I would like to dedicate uh, my all the work uh, and all our whatever being told to me so humble to my supervisor, Dr. D.K. Chakravarti, who is uh, in spite of, uh, you know, suffering with the COVID, he could speak few words uh, and I am so grateful to him. Guy, my another supervisor with whom I did it, my postdoc in NCAR at that time. And then uh, I express, and he is so kind that he came online and pro delivered a talk. Then another father of air quality science at international level, uh, uh, Greg Carmichael, who is a professor in Iowa State University. And he was uh, one of those encouraging person who has made uh, me to start uh, the first air quality forecasting system in India, which has been implemented uh, 
in Delhi. And obviously, the inspiration here in India is uh, our ex uh, Secretary of Government of India of Ministry of Sciences, Dr. Salesh Nayak. My profound um, gratitude to ex directors uh, of IITM, Professor Goswami, then present director, Professor Ravi Ranjandaya, Secretary. Ministry of Earth Sciences, Dr. Rajivan, and all colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, uh, I do not want to make my these uh, few words uh, like acknowledgement because uh, after my uh, taking taking a few words, uh, there would be a uh, acknowledgement uh, which will be given a lot of thanks uh, and consider that uh, I join that all the names uh, who were being taken there as my acknowledgement also, because uh, there is a library team here at IITM led by Shompadas who has worked day night uh, in uh, you know, making this film. And uh, some of my most favorite students you can see on the screens, uh, Dr. Saroj Kumar Sahu, Dr. Sachin Gunte, Dr. Vikas Singh, you know, those are, all of them are lovable students, but those are the one who have done and who with whom I have a huge expectations in the future that they will do it. And all of them have started their new things in India. For example, Saroj Kumar Sahu, emission inventory, he's a king of emission inventory in India. It's Dr. Vikas Singh, air quality, the best modeling, if somebody has to know, he's the one who has started. Sachin Gunte, who is the one who is a master of experiments. You tell any instruments to him, he will just open it up, make it, and you will save huge amount of money with the operational maintenance contract. So, you know, these are the way, this is the way, that way there are a number of students like uh, uh, Srinivas, uh, all those people did uh, work in a uh, modeling. But, you know, all those now, I, can, I cannot tell all the names of 22 PhD students, there are many mentors, uh, there are many colleagues, for example, in Safar, um, Rajnikanth is the one who is now taking full care, Dr. Murthy, who is looking after now Safar related things. But uh, most important things to a youngsters are the message I would like to give to my PhD students, their PhD students. There, you, there was a time when I used to be the grand student of Dr. A.P. Mitra, but now I have a, I am honored or I am a proud to say that I have also grand students, uh, uh, grand students now, because my students, students who are well comparing and doing all, they were my grand children's basically. So the message which I would like to give them that, you know, the five fingers, all five fingers are not equal. So similarly, in any guru with whom you work, all you five, there will be a different tuning and that is what you, you, uh, you, you make a wonderful scientist in you. But uh, there are different kinds of words, is a competitive words in many sense. There are many different kind of a people are there. So you must put a united front uh, in a scientific deliverably. When it comes to scientific discussion, scientific delivery, you all should be united and make a boat which will certainly flood. So this is something, a message where whatever the differences you are having and you should have a differences, that is why he is making you a good scientist because you have an independent capability of thinking. But when it comes to delivery, when it comes to working, when it comes to show to the international world that what science we learn, what science we are doing it, that has to be a united front. Because as you grow, as a single person, there might be a lot of people who must be thinking something different about you. But when you are united under one umbrella, it will be very difficult to break that chain of work. And that is something we should do it. And another thing is, try to make uh, whatever you start doing the research uh, to its logical conclusions. 
we have all the habit for example in a hockey it is being told that we are wonderful hockey players we take balls up to the d but we are not able to convert into the goal we get penalty stroke we get penalty corners but we can't do the goal the point is we are now in a position we must do the goal and that is where your existence your name will prevail so once you do wonderful work obey the advices of your supervisor but at the same time argue with him scientifically and guide should also be there that if my student is telling something and then then guides will convince sometime you will get to have to convince so these are the some words uh, which i thought that uh, i will share with you a collective front collective science spreading awareness and last but not the least that uh, we scientific fraternity normally our ancestral my ancestral scientific fraternity has a kind of a habit that publication of the paper is everything the science is limited to just to publication of the paper but that time has gone do fundamental science that should be your first, first priority but what science you did it you need to get it translated into the information which has to be useful to the society and that is something i have learned and i am so proud that after being in iitm and many other places like prl sokhari university in ncar in and lately in iitm when you work as gi has very gi who was my phd supervisor has very clearly told that in a metallurgical community where the atmospheric chemistry person comes there so it becomes very difficult to you know cope up or he used a word like a survive but then if you put a good front do the good work deliver wonderful things travel science no reason that one day you will be a flag bearer with this i think uh, i salute all of you because uh, and i wish many of you to be seen as a, either bhatnagar awardees fellow of the different academies uh, then uh, there are several young uh, fellowships there are so many things government of india now started to encourage the young scientists i would like to see all of you in that and my blessings uh, my work uh, is always there i don't think uh, that i can stop doing uh, scientific work uh, until my last breath so rest assured that i am there i'm not going to go there anywhere i'm not going to do anything other than doing the science and i will always be with you with this words once again thank you very very much for the my phd warriors my young teams and those people who could get even a iota of inspiration from me i am so grateful to them thank you very very much and my salute thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you dr beg for sharing such insightful messages to us uh, now i would like to invite dr vikas singh scientist narl for presenting the formal war of thanks thank you rizana good evening everyone so it is indeed a great honor and privilege for me to propose a vote of thanks on this day where we are celebrating the world environment day along with the <coughs> felicitation function of our beloved dr gufran beg uh, who is very well known in the safar pro program for last 25 years for his le legacy for air quality and atmospheric chemistry research over india and from this program we have known that he has been inspiration for many people uh, to promote the atmospheric chemistry and uh, air quality work which has recently gained lot of recognition and which is the need of the hour to solve many problems so on behalf of the organizers i am extremely grateful to professor ravindra gettu the dean of industrial consultancy and sponsored research at iit madras for kindly agreeing to deliver the official opening remarks your gracious presence was encouraging for all of us 
We are extremely grateful to our keynote speaker and chief guest of today, Function Professor Guy Brusser, who is an associate director and CAR USA, an ex director of MPIM Germany, and uh, he chaired uh, many sessions, uh, many programs earlier, such as WCRP, WMO, uh, IGAG, IGBP. Uh, we thank him for his keynote talk on chemical weather forecasting, uh, basically highlighting the importance of meteorology in atmospheric chemistry and air quality forecasting globally. And he also discussed about the directions uh, in the air quality, production, uh, air quality prediction that we need to follow. So his talk was really very interesting for the air quality community. Uh, our heartfelt thanks to Dr. Gufran Beg for sharing his wonderful feelings, his experience and his guidance and his future directions uh, to us. Uh, you are, sir, and will be a great inspiration for all of us. Uh, you, your legacy will help us to solve the air quality problems in India and across the globe. I hope you will continue to shower your wisdom on the future generations. We thank uh, IITM uh, Director, Professor Ravi Nandandhaya, uh, Dr. Shalesh Nayak, former Secretary MOES, Professor Greg Carmichael, Professor Giri Brosser, Dr. Lija Jarkinen, Dr. Anna Elias, along with uh, Professor D.K. Chakravarti, who is the guide of uh, Dr. Beg, Professor Ranjit Sokhi, Professor Shamla, and many more, and all former and present uh, colleagues, doctoral, uh, doctoral students and uh, of Dr. Beg for sharing their wonderful wishes uh, through video messages. Uh, because of pandemic, uh, we, uh, we could not meet, but those video messages were really very much uh, helpful. Now, we thank IATM Pune team uh, led by Dr. Sompadas, including uh, Vishikesh Tambe, Rashmi Sahu, Suvarna Tikle, uh, Gaurav Shinde, Darshna Jadav, Samir Dapre for their hard work and coordinating with all the people and putting all the videos and information together in a video format. A big thank to Dr. Sachin Gunte, Associate Professor IIT Madras, and a former student of Dr. Beg to coordinate and proactively organize this function. Uh, we also thank his team members, Ankit Patel, Rizana Salim, Emil Vargese, who worked silently to make this event a memorable one. We also thank former students, uh, Saroj Sahu, Bhishma Tyagi, and associates of Dr. Beg for their support in organizing this event. Last but not the least, we thank all the people directly and indirectly involved in this event, and most importantly, audience for making it today to make this event a success. We once again thank you all for your attention to the whole program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much, Dr. Vikas. And here we come to the end of the function. Thank you all for attending. And thanks once again. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sachin. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Professor Gettu. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Gettu, sir, for organizing a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you to Sachin. He put a lot of heart in and a lot of effort. And uh, you certainly you deserve it, Professor Beg, because I learned a lot watching this uh, program. Thank you, sir. You spare a time for uh, you know at least listening all those. Uh, in spite yeah. of, I know that you must be very busy. Now uh, looking at your designation, that uh, in this time you must be busy. Thank so you I, very much. I have learned a lot, and I appreciate very much what you have done for this field, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.